for attending. We have a quorum of in the room people and online, so we can get our meeting started. Um, let's start with attendance, I guess. Paul, why don't you start us off, please? Sherry Brown, representing Budget Advisory Committee. George L. Moore, representing Economic Council. Rick Miller, Finance Committee. Uh, Lori Vinacor, Alliance of Delray Residential Associations. Joseph Sanchez, Chief Operating Officer. Leanne Evans, Treasurer. Heather Frederick, Chief Financial Officer. David Porter, representing Construction Oversight Review Committee. Jesse Sagner, representing Florida Atlantic University. Blair Littlejohn from the Office of General Counsel. All right, we have one public member. <laughs> I have Patrick Franklin here from the Urban League, too. Okay. And we also have Radcliffe Brown on the phone from the Technical Advisory Committee and Salvatore Manuel from COBRA. I think that's it. I, we have Ida Smith from the IG's office. I'm reading the screen. Um, Saber Avery's from maintenance. Ron Haran's from the Treasury Department. We may have some other staff people that join as we move forward. Okay, uh, any public comments? One public member. Okay. Then uh, items for approval. Do we have minutes from the market? Yes, we do. And Mr. Porter noticed some changes that need to be made to the minutes. I appreciate that. It was mostly on the uh, list of members. That was all. Anyone have any issues on the minutes for the March 25th meeting? Anyone online? No? All acceptable? Minutes are not accepted. Okay, uh, sales tax summary, over to you, Leanne. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for coming, and I apologize for the many times we've changed this meeting date. It's an interesting time of year with graduations happening and, and meetings and um, just trying to juggle. You'll notice that Dave Dolan, who is usually here with me, um, he's not here today, his daughter's graduating from high school today, so we have Mr. Sanchez pinch hinting. Um, so he'll be here answering all the questions regarding construction. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in. The sales tax receipts continue to come in above projections. Um, we've received through April, um, that's $767 million versus a projection of $648 million. It's 118% of the projected amount. Did I say? No, you said Okay. Every once in a while I slip and say billion instead of million. It is million so far. Um, 57 percent of the projected receipts um, we're at 52 percent of the timeline so we've received a little bit more but when you think about it the projection was built on a three percent growth every year so the fact that we're above where we thought we were going to be for the whole year at this point just shows how far in advance we are ahead we are for the sales tax revenues expenditures are through March um, sales tax expenses at 490 million Open purchase orders, 108 million. That's that's up from the last time you saw it. A lot of contracts have been issued in the last couple of months, and when you see it next time, it's going to be even higher. Um, we, we're issuing a lot of contracts right now. Interest earnings um, at 9.2 million. Um, the fees for the line of credit at 356,000. Um, we d I do just want to let you know the finance committee is meeting right after this meeting. They will be considering an extension on the line of credit. We're extending it for another year, same terms, which is remarkable that we have the same interest rate and the same unused fee. The unused, the having the line of credit and not drawing on it is costing 0.1%. So it's a really, really low interest rate. I was thrilled to get that same rate. Um, so those of you that are on the finance committee will hear a little more about that in, a, in another hour or two. This is the summary report that shows the original project budgets, the current budgets, um, and this is a roll up of the detailed report that's provided to you in the, in the package. Um, you'll see that we're going to make some changes. These changes since the last meeting included the things that we're gonna talk about today. And there are some significant changes we'll be walking through. Cumulative changes, um, funded to date, and the expenditures, this lines up almost exactly with the prior report. We've got a, a split between the sales tax funded and the non-funded that, that always throws it off by, I think it's $40,000. Um, I know exactly what it is. It's tracked. It's just split between the two lines. A purchase order is committed to date. 
And this, these two columns, this is something that Mr. Porter had asked for. So the, per, per, the percent of the referendum committed to date, but when you look at it, the percentage based on funds available. So we've got 67% of the funds that we have available to us in this fiscal year have been committed either in purchase orders or, um, in, or spent for sales tax. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to talk about today, um, you're going to see a number of proposed plan modifications. You've already heard us come in and say that some of the budgets are coming in higher than projected. And at prior meetings, we actually indicated that some work was being deferred because we wanted to take care of what we called cool, safe, dry, bright. We're changing and going back to just making sure everything's getting done all at the same time and not postponing. So some of the changes you'll see later on in the presentation is catching up all those items so that we're finishing everything at every school as we go. But I keep getting questions, how are we gonna make it work if the costs keep going up? So this is the strategy that we're, that we're working on. We have money in sales tax reserves and this is the amount at the beginning of this meeting before you approve any changes, okay? Um, we have interest earnings to date. This is through March as opposed to what I just mentioned. It's a little higher through, through May. And this is net of the fees for the line of credit. So this is the net amount available. And right now I'm projecting that if the sales tax shuts down a year early, um, we would still have $122 million more than we projected. Because when it shuts down early, that's based on revenue received as of September 1st. At that point, we would still have six months of revenue coming in. This number changes every month. So this is what it is for March. Um, so it's an extra $185 million that's available between what's in the reserves, interest earnings, and what we think is going to be extra sales tax revenues. I'm comparing that to the estimate we have received from AECOM on how much they think we're going to need over and above the original budgets to finish everything on the project list, all those facility renewal projects. And then we also have some other sales tax funded projects that we think are going to come in above budget. This is all guess, it's all proje it's educated guesses, it's projections on what we think it's going to be based on the current environment with the cost escalation for construction, general inflation, um, that's 222 million that we think we would need versus the 185 that we think we're going to have. So we have some changes coming to you today. We have four, the last four large facility renewal projects um, that are funded with sales tax. We're proposing to change that from sales tax and finance that. We would be including them into, into a debt issue that the board would consider in June and we'll be talking to the finance committee about that today. So we're going to say these four projects, we're gonna fund them with sales, with finance, we're finance them with COPS. That frees up sales tax revenue to be used to help deal with cost overruns elsewhere. And we also have one other project, a facility renewal for Riviera Beach Prep. The scope is going to change on that. It's going, we talked to the board initially about taking that school and rather than just doing a facility renewal, it's going to be expanded to include North Tech, which is something the board has been wanting to do for, for several years. So rather than doing just a facility renewal, it's going to be a much larger scope. We'll be moving that into a debt issue as well and financing it. So this is $89 million of projects planned to be funded with sales tax that will now switch into a borrowing. This money would then roll into the sales tax reserve to help deal with cost overruns and cost escalation. So that gives us a total possible revenue options of 275 million versus the 222 million of increased cost. That's a difference of 53 million. Coincidentally, it's about what we had in the sales tax reserves. Um, if we end up with really having extra money, maybe this doesn't come to fruition, it's not as much as we thought, um, the committee would then have the option. We could say, we're going to add more projects to the list, or we could take extra, earn, extra money and use it to pay down some of the debt that we're increasing to cover the sales tax projects. So this is the current strategy that we're keeping track of and monitoring, and we'll continue to adjust all the numbers as we move along, but we're very cognizant of the fact that we've committed to the taxpayers that we will get this work done. So this is the, the main way we're looking to do that at this point, is basically increasing borrowing to cover the costs of some of these big projects. Are there any questions on that? Does it make sense? 
Okay. Um, the next thing we wanted to talk about is proposed plan modifications. And before I go to the next slide, I want to talk just a little bit about costs for student station. Um, I think we've talked about that before when we talk about updating budgets based on cost for student station. That is a limit the state puts on the district as to how much we can spend on a new construction project. It only impacts on new space. It doesn't count matter with renovations, um, but if it's new space, whether it's an addition, a new school, a replacement school, we have to comply. So far, we've been able to build all of our schools within that threshold. We're with cost escalation in the, the labor market and the price of things, we now have two schools that are exceeding student station cost. And we've done everything we can to make it fit. There's no way to make it work. So the only way the school district is allowed to exceed that threshold is if we borrow for the projects, which we've always planned to do. It, it's Grove Park and Melaleuca that are the first two projects we're gonna talk about. Um, so that's not an issue, but when we borrow, Normally we make debt service out of property tax revenues. That's the normal way we do it. We're not allowed to do that. Instead, we would need to use sales tax revenues to pay for the portion of debt service related to the amount we're over that maximum amount. So we've got two projects that are over and we're proposing to use some of the sales tax revenue to make the debt service associated with these projects. And these projects are on the referendum list we're not funding them with sales tax, we're funding them with financing. But we're gonna have, and we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, with this particular one, it is over student station cost by two, just over two million. So we're going to propose that we set aside that two million dollars plus the interest, and I don't know that that is yet because we haven't done the borrowing. So we'll be bringing this back to the committee. And we'd set aside that amount of money of sales tax to make that portion of the debt service associated with the project. So I wanted to make sure we covered that. That particular portion is gonna be amortized between now and 2025 when we think the sales tax might end. So that would be amortized up front based on when the sales tax, it's supposed to be 26, it could be 25. So we're building that in to be amortized over the first three years. Well, the rest of the debt can go out longer. It's just the portion that exceeds student station costs that would need to be amortized soon, earlier. And we'll talk about this again at the Finance Committee, which starts at three, um, for, for those of you that are on that committee to, to get into the weeds there. But I wanted to make sure the Sales Tax Committee understood that, and I see a question raised. <laughs> so, bottom line, it sounds like we really don't have to comply with cost per student station because we have a workaround that's still going to get the sales tax money paying for the extra. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's the only way, the only way you can exceed the student station cost is if you're borrowing for it with COPS and then you're making the debt service, page, debt service payment, so that's principal and interest, from either sales tax impact fees or general obligation bonds. This project is not impact fee eligible. It's not for growth. It's a replacement school. And we don't have general obligation bonds. We have sales tax. So we'll be setting aside some sales tax in a new project that'll show up on your list called COPS Debt Service that'll be for this project. And we'll be coming back to you. The debt issue, we're hoping to price by the end of June and close in July. So when we meet again in August, I'll bring back a revised um, PPM number 122 um, that gives you the, the full amount. The state updates, they, the EDR, the Office of Economic and Demographic Research, is tasked with updating that index. Um, they do it twice a year, and it's based on CPI. So we'll get an update. We're using the data they gave us into December right now. Um, I expect we'll get a new number in August, and then it'll up, be updated again twice a year. Um, CPI is not growing, is not rising as quickly as construction cost escalation is. It's, it's a different, and I mean, CPI is part of the inflation numbers that we hear on the news all the time. So it's certainly going to go up, but this is part of the debt issuance. So I've got bond council and disclosure council. This will actually be in the offering statement for the debt issue that says this portion of the principal and interest will be paid with sales tax. Yes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the cost per student station set by DOE is yes. a statewide number, yes, regardless of yes. what county you're in. Yes. And so we get hammered a lot because we have a much higher cost of living here than 
a county that might have 3,000 people to it. There's no regional adjustment for the cost per student station, which comes up in Tallahassee every year to say there needs to be. In. And, and EDR actually, oh, actually, I think it was EDR did a study, and they actually recommended changing the way this works to something that's more regionalized, and the legislature declined to take it up after they asked them to do the research. So that research is out and online. Um, it's on their website. This is the research. This is what their recommendation was. The legislature decided not to take up their recommendations. So I, I do need to go back and circle back. There is a general increase to this project, and as I mentioned, it's funded with, with COPS. Um, the, the cost of the school is actually increased by $12 million, um, mostly due to cost escalation. It is funded from an upcoming borrowing. There's also, within the budget for Grove Park, there is a holding school. Um, these students, we were going to build a separate holding school. Instead, we're using um, the second floor of Lincoln Elementary School. It was previously used as a whole temporary campus for Washington during their remodel. So we'll be doing that. So the cost of the holding school has gone down by $6 million. So it's a net increase of about $6 million. Um, the holding school is not funded with sales tax um, or borrowing. It's funded with local property taxes. Um, we, we don't borrow for holding schools because they're typically there for a year or two and it's not appropriate to borrow for that. So it comes from a different source, but it's all part of the project that you all look at. And your dictate is to monitor to make sure the work gets done and we're using the sales tax appropriately. Yeah. Yes? I think either you or Joe, it might help to explain how the original budgets were established because we keep saying it's over budget, but it's possible the budget was wrong. So that's another reason it could be over budget, including inflation. Right, this school, the original budget, this is the change since the last capital plan. But the original budget was set based on the state cost per student station, and those numbers have changed. Um, so they, they do update. Um, I, I know the project has, we, it's changed. It was going to be originally tear the whole thing down. Now we're remodeling, renovating the media center in an effort to try to get it within student station costs. Um, this budget also includes, which we, we just talked about yesterday, um, it includes keeping seven modular classrooms on campus. So we very well may be coming back to you at the next meeting with another change because we hate to open a brand new school with old modulars on the campus. So we may go back to the contractor and say expand that building to include eight more classrooms Again, to an odd number, so it's seven modulars, it would go to eight additional classrooms. Um, so there may be another increase to this project that we'd bring back to you. So I don't be surprised if we come back in August with another change to Grove Park. But this is the information we have right now. So just to be clear, we set our original budgets based on the cost per student station. So if we had 900 student stations, you take that times cost per student station. Right. I think it needs to be understood that the cost per student station that Tallahassee has set has never been what we could build to in Palm Beach County. So any budget we would have set using that analogy, we're going to be under budget right. at any point in history. And to give the state some credit, there are exemptions that, that weren't in place when we started this. Um, when we build it, you do the math, the number of students time the factor, and then you can add on the cost of security, the cost of anything that's more than five feet away from the building, um, the cost to harden the building for hurricanes, so that extra concrete and stronger windows, um, building retention ponds, there's a list of items that we get to add on top of that base. And the intent is that that's supposed to level the playing field, but you still have the basic cost of labor is, is high, maybe higher here than in other parts of the state. And that number has changed nationwide of late. So there, there's a lot of factors. And I know we've gone back to try to analyze exactly the, the various components. And there's so many complicating factors as to why costs are going up. Some of it is cost escalation. Some of it is labor costs. Some of it is changed to the way we're building. Um, we're not using steel. We're using concrete for this building instead because steel is more expensive than concrete, and concrete works just as well. But there's been changes made to the way we're building based on supply chain issues. You know, that's part of it as well. It's, it's I, I, Mr. Porter and I talked after the Construction Oversight Review Committee, and I went back and tried to break out the components of Grove Park and where the costs, where the budgets have been. And there's so many variables. I wasn't able to tie it down to one thing or another. And I did try. Um, it, was, it was a challenge. There's just a lot of pieces to that puzzle. Leanne, 
What's, what's the total cost for Grove Park? I mean, it's an old school. I think you've been better off knocking the thing down and we start are. over. We are. We are. We are. We are we're, we're tearing down everything except the media center. The and reason the reason we're not tearing down. What's the, the total? This is an elementary. Yeah, it's about 35, I think, 35 million. Yeah, the total budget is right here. But George, the reason we have to retain one of the buildings is because renovation costs don't go against the cost per student station. So the youngest building that's on the campus, the media center, we're just going to renovate, which we're allowed to do, and not go against cost per student station, which gives us more money we can put into the new building. So it's going to be 98% new and 2% renovation. So the total project budget is $36 million. $36,421,489. That's everything. You, you that built, includes the whole school. You, you have built some elementaries brand new for less than that. Yes. The most recent the elementary school. <laughs> the, um, the, the Blue Lake Elementary that's going to open in August, we awarded a contract on that about a year and a half ago, would my guess. That budget's $31.2 million. But you're still going to end up with an old, school, old location, which... Well, yeah, everything else is going to be new. It's going to be pretty much new. Uh, yeah, there's, the city, there's nothing... Joe, the city was supposed to improve that street. Military? Or investment. Investment. The whole, whatever. Yeah, it's, what on, that, it's on military and investment is where the school is located. Up in Palm Beach Just south of North Lake on military. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's Grove Park. Are there any questions? I th this one was complicated, and so is the next one. So I wanted to spend some extra time here. Actually, I do. I do have one question. That when you talk about the difference in the a cost for steel and concrete that includes the labor, the whole thing. Yes. So it it costs less to. To. Uh, it, it changes from <laughs> from year to year, or yeah. even from month to month. Month to month. <laughs> month, month. Yeah, I mean, one month steel could be less expensive than than concrete, and the following month the, the opposite could change. So you got to got to price it both ways to see to see which way you, you need to go at this time. You know. At the construction meeting, we approved a change order on two schools that had already been designed ready for construction in steel. And then when the contractor priced things out, he said, I can save almost a million bucks on this if we go back and change the concrete simply because of the current price of steel and the lead time for steel. Now there's steel in concrete with rebar, but that's not having the same impact cost-wise or lead time as steel beams, steel columns, and the, the, the superstructure for the building. When you go back to redesign it, you have you have costs of designing, but it's oh, yeah. minimal compared to the, the, yeah, the money you're saving. A million in savings was about nine hundred net thousand in savings. So yes, you've got that extra, but it's still nine hundred thousand in savings. Okay, thank you. Which one is stronger? They're they're, they're, they're equivalent. It's, well, yeah. If you go back to uh, <laughs> structures class, it depends on compression versus uh, tension. So, but yeah. Concrete is much stronger in, ten in compression, and steel is much stronger in tension. But for a building, they're, they're, when you, the way you, an engineer is going to design it, it's, they're both equal. They both will last just as long. Okay, I'm going to move. Um, what, one more chance. Any, any other questions on Grove Park? Melaleuca is another school. We had groundbreaking for both of these. I mean, the, the schools are still where they are. The kids are still in them until Thursday of this week. Um, when when that ha when they leave this school, the schools will be torn down pretty quickly. Uh, Melaleuca modernization. The the cost of the school has gone up by seven million. Um, the cost of the holding school has increased by three million. We're building a temporary school alongside Crestwood Middle School that will house students from Melaleuca in FY23 and Winbrook in FY24. This is going to be very similar to what we did um, in Boca Raton for Verity and Addison Miser. Same, same exact type of structure. It's leased portables. Um, the cost associated with, with it is really building all the infrastructure. All those portables have to have electric, sewer, water, um, covered walks, sidewalks. Um, all those things happen. The, the, 
New School itself is funded with borrowing, the COPS, and the uh, Holding School is funded with local funds. It's not sales tax or borrowing, it's local property taxes. This school is the second one that is exceeding student station costs. It's, um, the current at number is 2.3 million, and we will be bringing this back to you once we've done the debt issue and I can give you the interest number. So it'll be the principal and interest payment for the portion of the project that exceeds student station costs. So this is obviously on the referendum list, so we'll be tapping sales tax for a portion of that debt. Okay, um, the next group, um, these are um, going, these are going back on projects. We've awarded contracts, but there were things that we had deferred because um, there wasn't enough money to fit it in the project budget. So we're going back and picking those items up and telling the contractor we want to do it all. So in each project, it's a total of 6.1 million of budget increases for these six projects. It's for Dreyfus School of the Arts, Bandy Creek Elementary, Krista McAuliffe Middle, Jupiter Middle, uh, Lake Park Elementary, and Lake Worth High School. So for each one of them, we've listed the amount that is the increase for these projects and exactly what that money will be paying, will be used for. And again, this is the reason why we wanted to make sure we've got extra money in that sales tax reserve and we're moving some of those big projects because we see the price, prices coming up on all, the, all this work. So just to put the exclamation point in all of this, as we're seeing the increases and putting back things that we had deferred, you're watching the checkbook to make sure that we won't have to come back later and say, sorry, we can't do school X, Y, Z because we've used up all of our money. That's what this is all about right, right here. It's trying, yep. this is part of the 190 million that, that AECOM has estimated the projects would come in. <clears throat> so this, this is why we have that plan because we know these things are coming. Um, the next two slides, uh, the next two items, 130, it's what we just talked about. It's, it's taking those four high schools and moving them to a borrowing, and that's going to, it'll increase the borrowing by 75 million, roughly. That amount may go down some. Um, I'm reviewing each one of these projects line by line to make sure we want to fit it into a debt issue. Um, and it will increase the sales tax reserve by that same amount. So these will be um, borrowed, and then the money that it's generating the sales tax money that will not be used on these projects will be moved to sales tax reserve to help deal with the cost overruns that we're seeing. And then number 131, um, we're just moving some work up. That is, there's 31 projects that have work being done that was scheduled for FY 24, 25, and 26, and we're moving that up into 22 so that work can get started over the summer. The proposed plan modifications, I have them here and I'm going to skip down to that page because I want to show you the 31 projects. And this is online for you to see with the, with the other meeting information. So this is the summary. We're actually redu we're increasing project budgets by 5.6 million in 22 and then taking the money away in 23, 24, and 25, all right, 23, 24, 25, and 26. And then we're taking money away from the sales tax reserve in 22 and adding it back in in 24, 25, and 26. Um, and the list of each school is listed here, and it shows for each one that we're taking it. This first example is taking 204,000 in it that was planned for 24, and we'll be using it in 22. So in each case, we've listed exactly what we're doing, and we're tracking each one of these. Well, and, yes. I'm sorry. Um, I know you're doing this, but just for the public to understand, when you're moving things into COPS, you're keeping an eye on the maximum borrowing that the district has the capability yes. of. So all of a sudden, the Finance Committee <laughs> doesn't have to worry about that aspect to go, oops. The Finance Committee is going to see this at the next meeting, and I'll, I'll offer, if anybody from the Sales Tax Committee would like to stay, the Finance Committee is meeting starting at 3 o'clock right after this meeting and we'll be going over that debt issue and the revolving line of credit that we use for the sales tax. You'll get a fabulous market update first from, from, from our investment advisor, uh, but then we'll be talking about these. If you want to stay, and that material is online, I'll be happy to send you a link to that. Um, it actually shows charts showing what our capacity is and the, the planned borrowings. So we are certainly tracking that, and the Finance Committee will be voting on that this afternoon. Thank you. Are there any questions on those, on the plan modifications? 
not. We do need to have a vote to accept yes. those. Yes. Um, I suggest we just vote on all of them since no one had any objections or questions as we went along. Um, do we need to poll everybody or we just say any opposed? Can do that? Let's just do any opposed. Anyone online opposed to all of them going forward? All right, no one in the room is raising a hand, so they are all accepted. Thank you very much. And now we're talking about updates, and I'm going to let Mr. Sanchez. I saw, I saw Dave sneak in online, but I'll, I'll handle these, Dave. <laughs> is he online? <laughs> I, I saw, yeah, I just saw sneak. <laughs> so uh, these are just some photographs of some upcoming projects um, that we're just going to run through relatively quickly. So far left, you see more economy Park, some um, reception area repairs that were done, um, HVAC work that was done, also done at Murakami Park Elementary School. The lighting work done at Eagles Landing, and then at the bottom, so oh, lighting Park. at the Liberty Park. Okay, thanks. Uh, some additional work, Limestone Creek, we did some roofing and some bathroom work. Um, in the Jupiter Elementary, we had uh, roofing and stucco repairs there. Um, at Spanish River, um, we placed some doors and windows. Um, Eagles Landing, uh, we placed some flooring there. And then um, at Jupiter Elementary, did the, some stucco repairs and, and parapet <coughs> repairs there. Um, some additional work at the Limestone Creek, some plumbing work there, uh, some, some roofing work. And then at Liberty Park, uh, back there, we did some striping and roofing at Morricombe as well. Here are some of the major projects. Uh, this is the, the new 03 triple High School, which is just north of Woodlands on Lions Road, south of uh, Lake Worth Road. Um, this is scheduled to open in August of 2023, so we're a year away from opening this one. Uh, Blue Lake Elementary School is in Boca Raton, right next to uh, Don Estridge um, on Military and Spanish River. And this one is opening up this coming August. So it's, we're um, in good shape for opening. We should be completely co with, um, substantially complete in June. And this is the new uh, West Boynton Beach area middle school, which is adjacent to Sunset Palms at um, Boynton Beach Road and Acme Dairy. Um, so just west of the Turnpike. So this is not a referendum project. However, it is a, a major project that we're doing uh, we had groundbreaking also for this one last week, uh, so it's well on the way. Another Moss project. This one's scheduled to open in August 2023 as well. Okay. So we have a couple of videos. We have a couple of videos, and then that that would be the end of it. So he, um, Jonathan's going to play the videos for us. But before we click on those, I just wanted to ask if there were any questions. Joe, I would assume your photo of uh, Blue Lake was an old photo because yeah, June, photo. June is only next week. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little older photo. <laughs> and so is the video, so you, you're going to see an older video. The video okay. is like a... All right, that's fine. I think the, Feb the video is February. Okay. Go ahead, Jonathan. The first day of school is going to be fantastic, welcoming all of our students, their parents, to see not only this world-class building, but the exceptional staff that we're putting together to service these students within our school boundaries. This piece of land was donated by the city of Boca Raton, specifically in a collaboration with Mayor Singer and Chairman Barbieri. This is going to be the crown jewel of the city of Boca Raton as the newest school here in the city limits. The name of this school will be Blue Lake Elementary School. Our committee met uh, with community members, students, the Boca Raton Historical Society, and we thought naming this Blue Lake would be a great representation of the geographical area and the roots that IBM had here in the Boca Raton community. This is an honor to be the first principal here at Blue Lake Elementary School. Uh, Boca Raton is very special to me. I am extremely proud to serve this community in this capacity. We are well on schedule for this to be completed, so students are ready to be welcomed on August 10th, 2022. Here's the high school. school is going to be located just north of Woodlands Middle School, it sits in approximately 47 acres of land. This high school is going to house uh, 2,703 students. 
Just in the area, John I. Leonard is very overcrowded. Palm Beach Central is very overcrowded. Park Vista is overcrowded. Um, Santa Lucia is overcrowded. So uh, hopefully, uh, Chippewa, the new high school in Western Lake Worth, will provide relief to all of those schools. The high school will be uh, offering a, a plethora of rigorous courses, including advanced placement and ACE coursework. So students coming from other high schools will be able to uh, continue with their ACE diploma. The athletic complex will include a 4,000 seat stadium, gymnasium, baseball and softball field, weight room, wrestling room, and what I find really, really special is they have two additional practice fields. School will also include a, a state-of-the-art media center uh, and a high-tech auditorium. We are very excited and at the end of the day what we want is for the community to be proud of these schools and have their students in these schools. Okay. <laughs> so with that, I just put, next meeting is scheduled for is it August 8th? August, uh, let's see, it was on our list here. August 26th. 26th, I have the wrong date on here. I, I, we just said, told ISOC it was the 26th. I, I rock, it was the 26th. So it's August 26th. You should have those meeting, that meeting already on your calendar. So we'll be back to our morning time at, at normal at 9.30 for that meeting. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, once again, thank you so much for coming, especially Leanne, on a rainy Friday. Leanne, there's still something on here. Was it left oh. over, the term limit waiver? Yes, I'm getting, trying to get ahead, um, sorry. The, with the last meeting, um, is that on the agenda? Well, it's, well, on the, it's on the agenda that I have in my hand okay. and it was handed out, but yeah, it's, it's I thought on we here. resolved that. We, we did, on we did. Last we did, what we did. I'm trying to do is get ahead for, for the next meeting. The next meeting will be in August and that's right after school starts. So at that first meeting after school starts, we should have our election of officers. So if, the committee wants to do what we did this last year. I, last year I didn't know we were going to do it. So now I know that the committee likes having Mr. Porter as the chair. And if we want Mr. Porter to continue, we would need a, a term limit waiver. And I need that to get that to the school board before we meet next. So I thought I'd bring it up to see if the committee still wants to do that. Second. Second. Okay. So I'll get everything in place so that when you meet in August, we already have the approval to do that. So I just wanted to check in with you before. Doesn't mean I have to run, but thank you that uh, I have the opportunity. You have the opportunity. So that's down on the campaign contributions. <laughs> All right. Anything else by anyone? Anyone online with anything? No. Okay. We're then adjourned. Thank you.